Have you ever wondered if there are chemicals in your brain making it harder for you to achieve your goals, distracting you from the things that you want to get done? That's what we'll talk about today. If our conditions were truly happy, we should not need to divert ourselves from thinking about it. Blaise Pascal. Today we're going to talk about a book, Dopamine Detox, a short guide to remove distractions and get your brain to do the hard things by Thibaut Maurice. The reason that this book is important, I think, is because it shows you what dopamine does to you. Dopamine's a chemical in our brain. We all have it. And it helps us do some very important things. It kept us alive while we were people living in places with dangerous animals and pastures and when there are dangerous times in our lives. It is an important chemical in our brain. But the way that our modern world works right now, it works against us. It takes a lot of our natural instincts and turns it against ourselves in such a way it makes it harder for us to get the things that we want to get done. But it also means that there are ways to accept it. And there's some tactics you can take to help you overcome some of the effects dopamine has over your day-to-day activities. He says that this book is really here for the people who can't seem to get done the things that they really wish they could get done. Maybe you're struggling to focus. Maybe you're struggling to actually do the hard work or do the things that you know that you should be doing. And he thinks if that's the case, then possibly a detox would help you get your goals. He thinks by following a book like this, it will help you stop becoming overstimulated by the things that you don't want to become stimulated by, the things that are distracting you and taking you away from the goals that you want to have. It'll make you feel less frantic. It'll make you feel more calm. And it will take times when you are particularly unproductive, where you could be productive and want to be productive and help you do those things. And it will help you focus on what you're trying to focus on. He says that you can tell you're having a problem when you know that there are things that you could do. There are things you want to do, but you never seem to be able to start. Or if you start, you get really distracted and you walk away. Maybe instead of getting up in the morning and exercising or getting right to work and start doing the things that you intended to do on your job, You're instead looking at Facebook, you're scrolling around the internet, or you're playing a video game, which isn't bad, but at the wrong time can be devastating to the goals that you have in your life. So there's some things to know, first of all, about dopamine. It is a neurotransmitter. It is there to get us to act on certain tasks that we need to do. It is there to give us a reward for actually doing something that we needed to do. So for example, If you were living in an agrarian society and you needed to get up and grow a plant, when you go outside and see your nice harvesting pumpkin, you get a dopamine hit from it. It's almost immediately rewarding if you eat. Yay, you ate something. It is encouraging you to survive and encouraging you to do things that need to get done. It tries to give us the desire to act, to motivate, to do something. So therefore, it's been an essential part of our survival for a long time. And sometimes it gets mistaken as being a, quote, pleasure hormone. And it's not exactly that. It, it isn't there to make life pleasurable. It is there to reward you for acting. And you'll even see that people who get into trouble with it start losing the pleasure involved with it. It becomes habitual. If you see someone who's gambling, who really needs to walk away from the table, their dopamine is keeping them at the table. If you see someone who just compulsively cannot get away from chocolate cake, it's because that dopamine hit is encouraging them to take the next bite. And even when it comes to people who are trying to stop smoking, it's working against you there too. Again, the brain is providing these systems that are there to try to help you accomplish what you're trying to accomplish. But when it becomes missed focused, it can actually be detrimental to us. One of the weird things about dopamine in a lot of reading that I've done about it is that its effect is very short term, almost milliseconds or few seconds that it actually does the work. And you're looking at your favorite cup of coffee. 
the initial dopamine hit happens within the first sip, within the first few bites of a chocolate cake. And then it starts to decrease from there. That initial hit that wanted you to go do something starts to drop off. People who buy a lottery ticket, that dopamine hit happens initially when they get that ticket. But how many times do they go on to maybe buy six more tickets, 10 more lottery tickets, or a dozen lottery tickets? And each time that impact of dopamine, that instantaneous reward that you get for feeling like you did something drops off after you initially did it. And the reason for that is that that dopamine hit initially stops and it doesn't start again until you do the next thing that gives you a dopamine hit. It is an addiction all of itself. And you might find it when you play a video game. You get that initial thrill when you solved a really hard problem or you just sat down with a big bowl of popcorn in your video game and you feel all excited and happy to be doing this. But after you realize an hour, maybe two hours, maybe six hours goes by, you're no longer having fun. You no longer have that warm feeling, that excited feeling. Now it's become a slog. And you wonder, how did I lose six hours in this game when I don't really feel like I'm enjoying myself much at all? So then the brain goes and says, you know what? The reason that you don't feel excited anymore is because you have to do the next quest. As soon as you do that next quest, you'll feel good about it again. And so you keep going. For any of you who have ever played the game Civilization in any of its versions, right now it's on version six, you'll know exactly what it is. You hit enter and it's one more turn, one more turn, one more turn. And before you know it, it's three o'clock in the morning and it's still asking you one more turn. There's even t-shirts out there advertising the one more turn. Civilization found this perfect way of making sure that you never stop. And it really keys into that dopamine situation to give you that hit you need to keep going. Well, that last time I played around, it didn't go very well for me. In fact, I'm not really having much fun at all. But I bet you the next time I hit return, that one more turn will make it all worthwhile for me. And that's where it starts becoming difficult. You start procrastinating on the things you should be doing and you lose track of time. You lose track of where your efforts should have been going instead of where they have been going. And maybe you come back the next day and take one more turn again. It never ends. And it's because the body is seeking that constant hit. You have all probably seen those studies where they give mice cocaine. If they push a lever on the bar and the mice with that bar that gives them cocaine will kill itself to keep getting more, to keep getting more and more and more until it's dead. Dopamine's not quite that dramatic for us, but it can be. It can be the thing that makes us avoid the very things that's going to make our life good, fulfilling, and get done the things that we really need to get done, whether it's personal goals, helping a friend or family, or our work goals. And what he feels is going on with dopamine is that our modern world, whether it's accidental or intentional, is hacking in to our dopamine systems. I think with some of these higher powered companies that can actually bring in neuroscientists and other types of studied people on how dopamine works, it is actually intentional. They're hacking into our system to make sure that we never log out of Facebook, we never turn off Instagram, we never shut down TikTok. Just one more video, one more turn, and one more bite of my cake. It keeps trying to get us to act. It doesn't know when the action itself is worthwhile or even good for us. And so he wants you to ask your self a question about what are you addicted to and where are you feeling like you're getting your main sources of stimulation and in the end is it making you happy or helping you achieve the things you want to achieve in your life i have a very clear dopamine addiction when it comes to diet coke i'm not much of a coffee drinker although i tried and i like coffee enough but that first diet coke in the morning i almost can't do without it I look forward to it. And once I get it, it's dreamy. It's that kick in the morning I really need to get going. 
Said it before, I'm not a morning person, and that Diet Coke helps me go. When I get other drinks that would have the same amount of caffeine that technically should help me go, a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, nope, doesn't work. It is really that Diet Coke that I associate and now look forward to, and now my dopamine is programmed to get me to get that first Diet Coke. He says that dopamine is the molecule of more, and that's because it continuously tries to get us to do more. Drink more Diet Coke, eat more chocolate cake, or whatever it is that you're addicted to, do more of that. And it's self-reinforcing. So then once you've had the thing that you have that dopamine addiction to, it rewards you, and then you want to have more of it. You feel good. You get that initial hit of it, and it's incredibly addictive in our system. And that's what really allows, beyond physical addiction of drugs and alcohol, allows us to get mentally addicted to things, whether, again, they are drugs or alcohol or video games or chocolate cake or exercise, even good things for us. We can get addicted to them, although I never seem to get addicted to exercise, by getting that dopamine hit when it triggers. And so he wants you to spend some time and write down any time you're doing an activity you feel particularly addicted to and start keeping track of it. What gives you that instant joy? And sometimes, like I said, it may be buying a lottery ticket. It may also be telling a funny joke at work. It can be all sorts of things. But write down those things where you start getting that hit of dopamine, that rush of joy that is very short-lived, but now you want to do more of it. He says in the end, it's why we need to get away from these things, because there are resources in our lives that are limited. We have limited focus, we have a limited amount of time, we have a limited amount of money, we can only eat certain things during the day, so if you're spending your calorie and chocolate cake, you're probably not eating other good things for you, and so that's where we have to go on this dopamine detox so that we can get back to doing the things that we want to do or getting away from the things that are addicting us. And he says that Many of the social media companies like YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, all are set out to hack your dopamine. One more scroll, one more page, one more video, one more Instagram feed. If you keep getting pushed to do it, it's going to keep pushing you to do it. I mean, that's how they make their money is by you looking at one more thing, spending 10 more minutes on it. They don't care if it's good for you and they don't care if it's affecting your life in a negative way. They just care that an extra 10 minutes means X amount of dollars for them. And one of the things that's interesting about these social media companies and other things like online stores or anything that is trying to get us to act is that their algorithms just get better and better and better, right? They start getting to know you almost better than you know yourself. And in a way, it's a good model for what dopamine looks like. If we don't do the thing that it thinks that we should do, again, because it's kind of stupid and it's just going to take from you what things you want to do and then try to encourage you to do more of it, you can see how desperate it'll start to get to get you to do that thing again. He says that sugar also increases dopamine. That's why always sweet things feel so good to us that if we're having a stressful day, that maybe a donut or maybe a cookie makes us feel better. and. The reason is it wants us to survive. And at one point in our trip through humanity, we needed to get calories in in order to survive. And so anytime you get that high fats, high sugars, both of them rich in calories, it gives you that hit because it's saying, good, Jill's surviving. Look, she took in a bunch of calories, so she's going to make it one more day on this planet. We're not in that situation anymore but those systems still exist. And he says that some of these things are as addictive as nicotine or heroin. How can we take back our dopamine systems? How can we take back our sugar systems so they're not trying to upend every goal we have? I remember reading a quote of one of the founders of Facebook where he was asking someone if the person was into Facebook yet. And the guy was like, no, I don't really use Facebook. And he goes, we'll get you sometime. They know how addictive all of this is. And they know 
that it becomes incredibly hard to avoid. Not only that, it wants us to instantly act. Have you ever seen in those social media, hey, Jill, would you like to post? Would you like to share a photo? Come on, talk to your family, talk to your friends, and show them your latest adventure. It doesn't want us just to be consumer of things. It also wants us to act on those things because it knows, too, that when you post your content, it's going to get other people who are interested in your content to also look at Facebook. So it becomes viral in that sense. And he says to get away from all of this and to start getting back to our goals, we have to do so slowly. We have to do it through consistent effort. And that means eliminating those distractions, getting rid of those things that make us feel restless when we don't get them. And that long-term activity, that long-term work towards it will move us away from those things. It's not good for us to have all those stimulus items that are in our lives. When we were out there living in huts and chasing down animals, there were only a very few things that did this to us. Ooh, I caught a wildebeest. I grew a carrot. I drank some fresh water. And I found someone to date and have children with. There were limited items of things that triggered our dopamine system. But now, with all the things we have in our world that just triggers it on its own, and All these algorithms and systems in place with these businesses trying to trigger those things, it's not good for us. We feel overstimulated, maybe even a little wrecked. And what he says is it doesn't have our best interest in mind. Once we get that point where we're overstimulated, we're over addicted to dopamine, then we have the problem that it's hard for us to go back and focus. And your brain will start telling you tricks, it'll convince you that oh man, this game is so much fun. Keep with it. If you keep with it, you're going to get someplace awesome. I like Civilization. I really enjoy playing it. But I can tell you, you never really get any place awesome. You win a battle. You take over this particular plot of land. You discover a new island. You're not achieving anything. You're not getting anywhere you want to go unless you were just looking to relax for a few hours. Your mind will say, You can get your things done later. Ah, you know, don't work today. It's Sunday. You have all day tomorrow to work. And then for what reason do you think, oh, well, if I don't play today or I don't eat this chocolate cake today, when will I get this chocolate cake again? And it gives you that fear of missing out. That's why the fear of missing out is so potent, because we worry that if we don't act now, we'll never get to. His book is really good, and it offers some plans for you to get away from dopamine. He has a 48-hour plan, a 24-hour plan, and a partial dopamine detox. And he said that the 48-hour plan is eliminating all or most of the places where you're getting overstimulated. Can you spend two complete days and avoid them entirely? Maybe your phone is locked and put away. Maybe it's stuck in the car so you can't get it. Your watch goes with it too. The chocolate cake, the coffee, the Diet Coke, the sugar, all those things that really get you into that bad state have to go. And can you do that for 48 hours? And at the end of that, you will feel more calm, more control of what you're doing. And that will help break the cycles of what you're trying to get to. So that's when you start writing down the things that make you feel overstimulated Now you have a list of the things that have to go in the lockbox. Maybe they get put in the car, the garage, in the basement, someplace where you can't get them. And instead, you're going to relax. You're going to go for walks. You're going to get out in nature. You're going to do all sorts of things that you need to do. And that's where he says that you're going to start writing two columns, cans and can'ts. The things that you should keep doing and the things you must avoid at all costs. He says to add friction. That's what we're talking about. Stick all those things in a garage, put them in your freezer, throw them in your car, get them away from you. And then start writing down and making sure that you didn't miss anything. You know, so if you got rid of a lot of things, your stimulation levels are down, but you found a few more things. They even talk about, you know, doing things like if it's Facebook or Instagram or Amazon or whatever it is that's addicting you, log out. Get rid of the credit cards in them so that you have to type in the credit card every time you buy something or make the logins so much gibberish that you couldn't possibly remember what it is and type it back in again. 
That way you can't possibly fall back on these apps that you're doom scrolling or even realistically just having fun with, but it's also distracting you from the things you're trying to do. And then I think you see how it goes. He says it's important that when you're going to start this detox, you'd start it right off the first thing in the morning. Don't get yourself hooked up into the dopamine right away. Make sure that you're starting off clean and you're getting away from it. You start to clarify the tasks you actually want to do and you'll start feeling less stressed instead of being behind at work or not exercising when you hope to exercise. You'll actually start to do those things and it will start to replace the bad habits or the things that are working against you. And he thinks that having a daily routine helps a bit so that you don't fall back into the hole. Again, if you're addicted to going on Facebook all the time, but you have a structure in place now for when you're going to do certain activities and Facebook's just not a part of it, it will keep you from falling back in. Make sure that you eliminate other distractions, even if they aren't part of this dopamine hit so that you can focus on the things you want to do. You want to make sure that even if something isn't an addiction for you right now, you clear those things out before they become the replacements for the things that you were doing. Try slowly, but start to work without distraction, without walking away, without doing something else. So you find yourself, you're exercising, but about 10 minutes in, you just walk away. I know I've done that before. My friends have done that before. What is it that distracts you? And try to get rid of those distractions so that you can actually do the amount of time you were hoping to do without just walking away. Be very cautious about when you feel like you're falling back into it again. If you're reaching for Facebook, if you're going for that game, if you're getting that cup of coffee, make sure you see that you're slipping back into those patterns is what you're trying to avoid. He says to avoid open systems. And open systems are just any kind of application, any kind of situation that doesn't have a stopping point. You know, things like Facebook, YouTube, Amazon never ends, right? You know, you always heard that joke. I read the Internet and now I'm finished. There is no finish to these open systems. They keep going. So try to get away from things that have no limiting factor. And then he says in the end, you have to realize that the world is against you. Everything, Facebook, coffee, these sellers of things, drug dealers, whatever it is you're facing are all hoping you fail, all hoping that you go back to the things that you were trying not to do. So you have to realize that there are very smart people out there in the world who are going against you and working against you so that you don't get your goals. He says it's important that you have a plan to help you get away from this more permanently and fix the thing that went wrong. And he said that really what we have to do is get away from the dopamine drug, which is always do the next thing, do the next thing, and focus on what he calls the here and now neurotransmitters, which he calls endorphins, oxytocin, serotonin. Those are all things that try to bring us to our present. They are all things that try to award us for the immediate things that are happening, not the promise of the next great thing that will happen to you if you do this other behavior. And in the end, he says, give it 30 minutes. Give it a shot. Try it and see if it works for you. So my challenge for you is you could do his 48-hour detox. You could do his 24-hour detox. But let's start even smaller to just ensure we don't fail. What is the number one thing that is leading you to distraction and keeping you in that dopamine cycle? Can we, just for one day, get rid of it? And see, when we don't have our doom scrolling on Facebook, when we don't have that chocolate cake we've been looking forward to all day, it's going to be tough, but it's going to help you go towards your goals. Can you just for one day get rid of those things? And if you find that you can't, figure out what it is that stopped you from doing it. And now our fun entertainment advice of the week comes from Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Imagine the look and we're going to go to space if we were late. That was bloody brilliant. Well, thank you for that assessment, Mr. Weasley. Perhaps it would be more useful if I were to transfigure Mr. Potter and yourself into a pocket watch. That way one of you might be on time. Well, we got lost. Then perhaps a map. I trust you don't need one to find your seats. See, McGonagall's figured it out. 
they're not focusing. So by her threatening them to turn them into a map or a pocket watch, she's making them focus on the here and now, not on the future, not on their dopamine hits of their zany adventures, but focus on what's happening right now. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much. I hope you have a really great week. Please remember to tell a friend about this podcast. Send me any questions you have to jill at smallstepspod.com. 